Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of my favorite beats, actually. Really? Mo doesn't have headphones on, so he can't hear it. But he's just going to be over there. I hope no one's distracted. He no. Just, yeah, he said he's just going to be over there somewhere. There mm -hmm. you go. See, waving. Working hard. Hardly working. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about today and today only. That's how hot these tamales are. Last chance. This is it. Yeah. Now or never. Do uh -huh. or die. I love all those sayings. Yeah. Apple fixed something up real quick. We talked about it a couple of days ago. A few people hit me up on Twitter and said, oh, look at that. News report came out that people have been using air tags to track and steal high end vehicles. Stick a little air tag in the hitch receiver. Uh, you know, find a place to hide it on a nice, uh, expensive vehicle. Bingo, when it's bango, in, and then it, it was, it might have been bingo, bango. Yeah. <laughs> Just completely interrupt your sentence. <laughs> um, and they yeah. and anyway, so they would put it in and then and then actually come steal it once it's back in your driveway. And it's a I don't know, a better time to steal things instead of doing it in the parking lot when they first discover it. They're like, that's the car we want. This was a story that broke and it happened. It was actually the police around here that had been making some headlines because they were saying, uh, hey, we're noticing this trend of yep. high end vehicles going missing with air because of air tags. And you and I were saying, well, and we were, I, I remember talking about this even when the air tags first came out, how we were uh, curious exactly how someone would know that an air tag that didn't belong to them was near them, mm -hmm. like how that would all happen. And then Apple said, well, if you have an iPhone and it's after a certain amount of time, it'll, your iPhone will tell you, hey, unknown air tag is, is nearby. Mm -hmm. Your current location can be seen by the owner of this air tag. You know, you get this notification, this alert. But immediately, even all the way back then, we started to wonder, well, wait a sec. What if you have an Android phone mm -hmm. and someone is using this AirTag to track you? And I don't know, maybe they know you don't have an iPhone or something like that. Then what do you do? And so there was no solution up until now. And it comes yeah. shortly after that story broke. So you wonder if there's a connection. Probably not. Probably they were working on it. But the timing is curious either way. Apple launches AirTags and Find My Detector app for Android in an effort to boost privacy. Apple's following through on a promise to help Android users identify nearby air tags and find my trackers that aren't with their owners. Mm. So now you have a way to combat this no matter which platform you're on. I mean, of course, Android users are going to have to install this thing. Yes. Uh, it's called Tracker Detect, uh, designed to help people who don't own iPhones or iPads to identify unexpected air tags and other Find My Network equipped sensors that may be nearby. The new app, which Apple released on the Google Play Store Monday, is intended to help people look for item trackers compatible with Apple's Find My Network. If you think someone is using AirTag or another device to track your location, you can scan to try to find it. So you can do it on demand, which is kind of nice, too. Mm -hmm. But now people can get real paranoid, and they're just going to scan every time they exit their vehicle. They're going to be like, you're tracking, you're tracking, you track it. Yeah, um, I would be. It's, I feel like it gets at a point that you might be real curious. Now, the other thing to mention was the amount of time before you get a notification. It's not instantaneous. Mm -hmm. And I know some of these thieves were, if I recall the original story, they were aiming at somewhere less than a certain number of hours. Yeah. Because then those initial uh, updates would, would be, there you go, at a random time. Following the update, AirTags will beep if they are away from their owner's iPhone at a random time between 8 and 24 hours. And the, the thieves, of course, they would know this and the, they would adjust their uh, tactics according to those behaviors. But now all bets are off because people have the tools necessary and at least thieves would have to be concerned that maybe they're going to get found out in advance because somebody's going to be scanning uh, or using the app even if they happen to be on Android. As opposed mm -hmm. to iOS. So. so you still can't use AirTag if you use uh, an Android phone. It's just mainly like a detector app um, for other people's AirTags. And the Android app can play a sound within 10 minutes of identifying the tracker. It may take up to 15 minutes after a tracker is separated from its owner before it shows up in the app, Apple said. 
If the tracker ident identified is an AirTag, Apple will offer instructions within the app to remove its battery. Wow. So you still got to find it, if depending where it's hidden on your car, in the case that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you're going to look pretty hard if you get this notification to take the battery out. Oh, yeah. You're going to be... God, that would be crazy. You're mm -hmm. turning your whole car upside down. What would you do at that point? Take it to a mechanic or something and be like, yo, you got to take this thing apart. Yeah. If I can't find it manually, like myself, I probably have to take it. I guess to that's why auto it's, shop. I guess that's why it starts beeping. And then hopefully the sound will be enough mm -hmm. for you to come through and find it. This is brand new stuff. Look, only 195 reviews on there. You can see how it's going to work. But if you're at all paranoid about this, concerned if you have one of these interesting vehicles that could be a target or if you're just you know privacy concerned in general you can now install this app and run scans whenever you like mm -hmm. or it'll just work in the background on android and it already works on ios obviously yeah apple now lets you choose contacts who can access your account when you die uh -huh. here's how to set it up wow that's kind of a grim story it's a couple of grim apple stories <laughs> car theft and death yes and apple's helping you out with both don't get your car stolen and when you die let somebody else into your device. This is actually an issue, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's totally an issue. It's a weird one. It might be an uncomfortable one, but uh, I've heard plenty of stories of people who have lost access and there may have been a video clip of a loved one and they really want to get into an old device and mm -hmm. and they can't. And it's very, it's, even if they could, you wonder if the person would have wanted them to. It's a really weird yeah. philosophical uh, scenario, but... If, much like you have a, a will or something like that, you can do the same here. You can, if you so decide that you want somebody to have access to your device after you die, you can set it up in advance. Apple released an iPhone update Monday, iOS 15.2, including a new feature called Digital Legacy. What a name. Mm -hmm. The change will let you choose specific people who will be able to access your account after you die. It seems pretty straightforward. It's kind of like an emergency contact. Yeah. Basically. Uh, until now, it's been very difficult for loved ones to access an Apple account of a family member or friend who died without the phone's passcode or iCloud information. Surviving family members sometimes had to get a court order for access to deceased loved ones' digital data. That access can be helpful if a surviving family member needs phone numbers, emails, passwords, notes, and other information. It's very strange because Apple so privacy-oriented, and then you're, you wonder... Do you still deserve privacy in death? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And and it gets a little squirrely, but in this case, it's better because you just set it up in advance and then they know for certain that that's the person or people that you wanted to grant access to. Uh, yeah, so Apple Digital Legacy, I don't know. What do you think, Will? Would you Are you going to uh, leave your digital legacy to someone else? No. No, it, it dies when you die. Um, you get buried. I'm actually very concerned if they get hacked somehow. And then they would have access to my account. Who gets hacked? The person... The person who has my uh, credentials. Oh, that I've are, given you, are we having a crypto talk right now? Is that to... what's going on? No. Oh, no. well, why would they want to... What would be the risk? What do you mean? So why would they be a target to be hacked on your behalf because they are your digital legacy partner? Oh, maybe it's like a two-for-one deal. Like they somehow hacked, uh, I don't know, if I give permission to my sister or something. Okay. Um, they would be like, oh, here's a password for this gotcha. other person. Gotcha. And, you know, they would have access. everything kind of falls apart. The chosen contacts can access data stored in iCloud, like photos and scroll a little bit more. And documents after the original user dies, so long as they have a special access key and a copy of the death. See, I thought crypto right away. Yeah. I was like, you know, imagine there's some all types of crypto on there. Yeah. And you tell your family members. I mean, obviously, there's other ways, other redundancies you can set in place that are more robust than mm -hmm. just your phone. But I'm sure someone's going to use it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know you're not allowed to talk about crypto anymore, but no, I just, this story is too, some people have real value for sure on yeah. their phones and just sentimental and sentimental stuff, is really what it's know. about. But anyway, this is better. Give people permission to, in advance, skip the court order. Would you digital legacy? I guess so. Yeah, sure. You I would? don't know. Okay. I don't know, man.
Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped with the fancy holiday look to the website right now. There's a lot of Christmas spirit. Yeah, holiday sale 10% off the entire website plus free shipping. Now, the main attraction here is that Lawnmower 4.0, the all new skin safe electric trimmer, charges on a nice little dock, ceramic blades, skin safe technology, waterproof. LED light so you can see what you're doing. And this is a thing you're going to want to see what you're doing as you get closer to the groin. Of course. Area. But honestly, it's just a sensitive razor all around. It's not going to be tugging, pulling, stabbing. Uh, it wirelessly charges in the dock, actually, as well, which uh, the tech fans are going to be very happy about. Extended battery up to 90 minutes of use. They've really taken a pr the product and with each version, iterated and improved. And that's what brings us to the 4.0 two-tone black finish, hot foil stamped with a black chrome logo. Mm -hmm. Manscaped, holiday sale. Manscaped's best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0. Whether this is for your partner, dad, brother, or friend, get them something they'll actually use with the Performance Package 4.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash lou. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Also sponsored by Calm for Business. It's time to bring Calm to your workplace. We need it. I'll tell you that because I was looking at Mo earlier and he was over here. He's like a complete ball of stress. Mm -hmm. He's trying to figure out a problem. He's rubbing his head and his hair. And I said, you need Calm for Business. And over 1,500 organizations find Calm because of Calm for the workplace. Mm -hmm. Lincoln, Universal Studios, Go fund me, Kraft Heinz. Let me tell you what this is. You're trying to have an organization that's strong, not just from the standpoint of, uh, you know, the typical ways you would evaluate such things, but also in the mental, in 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 a, in a, a psychological health category. Resilient. You, yeah, you might you might say resilient. Mm -hmm. It's a nice word. So you jump on here. You take a master class. You train your mind. You have a deep concentration meditation provided by the business for the employees. Right now, Calm for Business is offering a one-year subscription for HR and benefit leaders when you go to calm.com slash later. That's a free year of Calm for HR and benefit leaders so that you can personally experience what Calm can do for your company. Get started today at calm.com slash later. Thank you to Calm. Elon Musk is uh, the 2021 person of the year. Yes. And uh, yeah. Do you think he deserves uh, yeah, it? Yeah, that makes sense to me. But I don't know. The idea of a person of the year is kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know why. Like even if. I don't know. It's a lot of. Is it pressure? Like I don't know what I'm. Why I'm feeling awkward about this. Even if. Um, I guess for this. <laughs> because it's one year that uh, encompasses. Yeah, it's also a weird. Know, it's also a whole lot. Weird year. I don't know. I think I have a trouble with uh, awards and headlines and all this stuff in general because. Um. I don't know. These, these things are just complex. Sure. Like there's so much going on. Obviously, the person of the year has to be somebody that's hugely famous, or at least I think it typically is. Mm -hmm. They're not going to uh, pick, I don't know, some humanitarian down the road who did something nice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or did something great. Like you have to, has to be some contribution. You have to be pretty well known. I mean, you're still selling magazines. I don't know if it's a physical copy of it or not. But Elon Musk has obviously done a lot in the last year and even before that. Yeah. He seemingly says no to no projects, working on going to space internet for all electrify yeah it's like man you can pick yeah. you could definitely pick worse but he is also um a divisive character to, to some i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know really what he says that is the most divisive stuff there was some stuff when early covid and I'm trying to think of the other stuff obviously uh sec finds yeah. Uh, California Just, uh, government, he kind of talked a little bit about. Yeah. Um, Playing around with crypto. Taxes, prices. crypto, doge. Yeah, he's a bit of a provocateur 
wonder if he would embrace that title or not. Anyway, but yeah, it's, man, Tesla has had a dramatic impact on the entire automotive sector and the technology sector. I'll say that. And it's got to be, you know, in my lifetime since I've been alive, maybe the most influential company that's launched, arguably. I'm sure you can make other arguments. People, people probably, you know. It's hard to, to to launch a new car company. We forget that because Tesla feels like they've been there now. But there were times where that thing was slippery. Yeah. And it was like, man, a manufacturer. And he just pushed through a lot of um, many obstacles, I'm sure. Many that were we completely don't even know about. I think where people get into trouble with this analysis is you think that in order to for a person to make these huge or significant contributions that for you to be on board with that, you have to be the hugest fan of them or agree with everything they've ever said. Well, I don't know necessarily know that's the case. People are, we're all weird and complicated and, and to have such strict criteria for how you, uh, you know, everybody ha is going to do things that you like and everybody's going to do things that you don't like. If you've ever, if you've ever, had relationships with people. This is part of being human. Mm -hmm. And people are going to do certain things and believe certain things and say certain things. And then they're going to change those things too along the way. Like we are, um, we're very interesting creatures. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, this is a very roundabout analysis. I don't really know what to say about it. I think it's deserved in his case. I don't know. I mean, there's probably yeah. a lot. There's probably a lot of people that could have deserved something like this. Mm -hmm. But certainly in our world in our realm uh this is a person who's having a significant impact and uh certainly absolutely changing the world yes period and, and change is good um i think um a lot of people would consider him a humanitarian that all of his companies are striving to help humanity in some way yeah i mean but he I mean, like to a very obvious um position he, what, by the way, what do you think is the most will end up being the most significant impact? Right? Like, the, it's not obvious with the space thing exactly what ends up happening. And, and I yeah. talked to you about this before, too, where I was curious how much of it is driven by one individual's uh, motivation and, and how much of it can get passed on. I mean, I'm not saying I mean, he's not that old, but. It's just a curiosity for me with this mm -hmm. all this variety of interests and who carries the torch beyond that and because space was dead for how long and then and then all of a sudden space is back and I'm not saying he's solely responsible for it but he's playing a big role in mm -hmm. space being back mm -hmm. and electric cars came and went and that electric car uh, from GM died and mm -hmm. they buried it for whatever series of reasons and and would we have such motivation from the variety of automakers now if it wasn't for tesla doing what tesla has done mm -hmm. man it's a, it's a lot sure person of the year yeah oh uh, yes he's earned it that's fine absolutely i got no problem with it i got i mean but like i said i think uh pe people may may have somebody else in mind and and they may have a list of attributes of, for that person mm -hmm. that's the trouble with the award is that you make it some people will read that as uh, somebody else was undeserving. I think it's an impossible task to say uh, who is the person of the year. And that's part of it is that you're supposed to know that in order for some individual to be named it, others cannot. So uh -huh. it's just part of the game of labeling someone person of the year. Exactly. Just accept that. Yeah. A lot of people doing a lot of things that are amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's all agree. And a lot, I, a, lot of people, a lot of people doing a lot of things that are not amazing. Yeah. But not Elon, though. Did He's they, mostly did they amazing. Get, did they get, do they, do those people get, um, wow, like villain right. of the year? Uh, that's and my, Time would host it? That's my magazine. <laughs> Every year we have villain of the year. I'm sure it exists. Yeah. I don't know who it would be this year. Speaking of Elon, this is a twist. This is a change of pace here. Actually, this entire episode, death and um, what are you talking about? We got stolen cars. Man of the year. You got man of the or, year, but now you're back to a suspicious death. Suspicious death or reported. Person of the year. Yeah. 
at Tesla parking lot in Fremont, California. Local police and fire departments said that a suspicious death occurred at the Tesla factory parking lot in Fremont, California on Monday afternoon. Firefighters responded to the Tesla facility and provided medical aid, but pronounced the subject deceased, and Fremont police are now investigating a possible homicide. Whoa! Uh-oh. Talking about a murder in, at the Tesla plant? Well, get a ready. Murder mystery. Conspiracy at, theorists. At Reddit is all fired up. Reddit's flying right now. The Look. sleuths? Oh, man. Everybody's sleuthing. Local police and on the same, or around the same time that the CEO of the company is named person, person of the year. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm joking. I'm, guys, well, I mean, I'm not joking. This is, I mean, a person actually got yeah. killed over here. So I don't know if it's connect. I mean, <laughs> on December 13, 2021, approximately December 13th. Okay. Very recently at approximately 326 PM. That's a weird time too. Three in the afternoon, Fremont Fire Department personnel responded to Tesla on a report of a subject down in the parking lot. Firefighters provided medical aid and pronounced the subject to cease Fremont Police homicide investigators on the scene, taking over the investigation so they believe it's a homicide. The Fremont factory is Tesla's only U.S. vehicle assembly plant today. Well, obviously, they're working on the one in Austin, Texas, a Cybertruck facility. Mm. Yeah, because here's why. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, no, I mean, you're going to need credentials to get into that parking lot. Yeah. Right? Like, like, I know that you're thinking, okay, there's a lot of people that work there. You're in a busy spot. I don't know. Probably no big deal. But, well, can you imagine in a parking lot somebody got murdered that worked here? Like, we wouldn't even be the same. Like, we would, it would not be business as usual. Yeah. I would try to find out why and how. Man, so when, you got to believe where? that, like, internally, I mean, the story is currently developing. I'm sure new information is going to come out. And maybe it's unrelated to anything work-related, but it happens on the premises, and for sure people are going to be, their imagination is going to be flying. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of important people coming through there. I wonder if Elon is going to tweet about it. Check his Twitter real quick. This is kind of a big deal. I mean, I know it, it kind of happened recently, and maybe he has to stay away from it because it's, you got to imagine <laughs> it's... <goodness. laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, wait, nine hours ago was before this report, right? Oh, okay. uh, no, wait, 13th. What's today? 13th at 326. Today's the, oh, never mind. It was yesterday. Yeah. He probably knew that report before he tweeted the Doge comment. Yeah. That's kind of weird. So nothing there. That's a Not weird yet. observation with timing. So 326, the person is pronounced dead on the <laughs> oh, 13th. Why am I laughing? No, it's uh, just this tweet is a. Uh, the tweet is is very unrelated to that event, but I guess the story wasn't out yet. You wonder when he would have found out. Mm -hmm. if somebody dies at your factory in the parking lot, and it, they they it would they, be immediate. I would they think, think it's a murder. It's got to be pretty close to me, especially I mean, when the news outlets. Unless get he a has hold of some it. type of weird sleep habit and didn't find out until. Uh, but anyway, yeah, very strange. Obviously, because it's Tesla, it makes news. And and I'm sure we're gonna find out more, mm -hmm. and hopefully the uh, suspect is, hopefully they have a suspect, and hopefully they catch whoever's responsible. I mean, yeah. Good luck. I don't know, man. So. Talk about murder, man. Yeah. The Tesla, Fremont, weird. Uh huh. Some lighter news though. Lighter news. Dogecoin soars after Elon Musk says Tesla will accept it as payment for merchandise. Automaker will make some merchandise available to buy with cryptocurrency. It's chief said in a tweet. What is this? What website is this? Wall Street Journal. It's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> you look at the way that his tweet is crafted, and then you look at how serious the Wall Street Journal post is. Yeah. Afterwards, like, here's the tweet. Tesla will make some merch buyable with Doge and see how it goes. No, no, period. And then the Wall Street Journal's version of reporting on that casual tweet. Yeah, Doge went way up. I guess he's still got some pull when it comes to the Doge thing. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Willie Do was boycotting crypto because he's been telling me that he's <laughs> off of it because it was keeping him. Well, up this is more Tesla news. Oh, not crypto oh news. okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay, okay. No, I sometimes mean, it overlaps, you know. Hey, man, you got the news is the news. What, what you do on your personal time, you got to take care of. Yeah, exactly. You know, I got that handled. You know, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be uh rolling the slot machine all day long you yeah. got things to do. you got you got you got life to live sure yeah so 
But when it comes to the news, if, if it's crypto, it's crypto. Yeah, you know. So, I don't feel guilty about it at all. So Doge is back in. It was out for a while. It's back in. It's going to be hot for five minutes or 15 or who knows. But uh, what it what it means is Tesla's not crazy n- n- to the point that they're letting you use Doge to buy a car, but they're going to let you buy the merch. And there's been a couple of interesting merch items recently, including the the kids quad power wheels looking thing. There's okay. been the, which is kind of pricey. So that would be a, quite a bit of doge. Yeah. Um, the whistle, yeah. which I ordered and I don't know where it is. Maybe it's at the UPS. I don't know if you checked recently, but the, so the whistle and whatever other merch they have. I mean, there's shirts and presumably mugs and keychains and you're, you know, you're kind of, yeah, your regular stuff that you would have onesies, jackets, hats. So I guess at some point here soon, you're going to get to use Doge for that, which is enough for the thing to boom uh, because you finally have some utility for it. Something. It can do something. Yeah. It can, you can turn it into a tangible good. <laughs> and uh, the dream is still alive. And also, I guess people know that Elon hasn't completely moved on from his romantic mm-hmm. relationship with Doge. Yes. I, I, I don't think it's romantic, but... no. Ooh, a lot of Tesla news today, Will. I told you. Mr. Tesla. Tesla releases new charger faceplates that match car colors. Holiday gift for Tesla owners. That's... Do you think... <laughs> coincidence that that lines up with the PlayStation <laughs> faceplates? Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I never thought about this. I, I mean, I look at the charger back there and I never think, hey, I need a different faceplate. But, man, there's some Tesla super fans out there. Uh-huh. They have and, a red, blue, and a gray. Yeah, it match. Uh, I mean, obviously, I would get the blue one if I got one. Mm-hmm. But uh, what would they charge for that? Did they say the price? Uh, they should say the price. It's $100. $100 for the faceplate. And oh. they say, hey, that might sound expensive, but it's made of tempered glass. So That's not bad. It's like a nice finish to it perfectly pair your wall connector to the paint color of your tesla vehicle with wall connector color matched faceplate made from the same durable tempered glass as the original design these faceplates offer a stylish alternative to your tesla charging setup an easy installation available in midnight silver metallic deep blue metallic red multi-coat and solid black tesla sells the faceplates for a hundred bucks could be a good holiday gift for tesla owners it only matches its latest generation, Gen 3 wall connector. And the price of that connector is uh, went up from 500 to 550 recently. I didn't know that. Oh. And here is instructions to replace it. Yeah, you just clip it right on there, Will. No big deal. NBD, as they say. Uh-huh. It's a big NBD. But yeah, I, the look, man. The enthusiasm around the brand, so big. And people... Like, even me, I got one, and then I started accessorizing it. I realized the video is not out yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about it. You like the, vid- it the, the video is coming out really soon. But when you love something, when you really like a product, well, that's a bit of a spoiler on the video, but when you really like a product, you feel this strange need to accessorize it. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 I don't know how to explain it, but you want to personalize it. You want to... Uh, you want an NFT of it. You want to enhance your relationship with it. Sure even further and it's like it gave you so much you want to give back you're like you know what i'm gonna accessorize you yeah and so anyway that's it's like you like with otis you start buying him like a toy or a collar or, i uh-huh. don't know i'm sure you bought all kinds of crazy things I have an otis tattoo exactly <laughs> exactly yeah i mean i, I see i, it, I saw I otis it. every time he's got some new thing he's chewing on or you, you kept buying him those beds to lay on, even though he kept chewing them in half <laughs> yeah. every time. It's like then, a weekly basis. Yeah, there's a brand new, there's another bed. Well, I want it. him to feel comfortable and warm. You're accessorizing. You know? sure. I mean, I don't know if it's comparable. Otis is alive. Your Tesla's not, but yeah. they or do it. Is it? Easy, Will. Imagine if the homicide in the parking lot was actually somebody summon, summoning driving a, a, yeah. a car. And the guy was run over purposely, mm-hmm. but it was actually the AI. Summons back and forth. Exactly. To, and the police are like, this to me looks like a homicide right here. Yeah. And there's, and the car is the, and they're like, actually no one was even manning it. 
It's the world's first AI homicide. Yeah. It's got blood all over it. And yet... Uh... Wow. <laughs> this just happened. I feel like we should take it easy. Yeah. But... Whoa. I, that just crossed my mind. Like, Sentient. Could a car? Could the car in any way be implicated or involved? Uh, see, that's what... I mean, I guess if they tell us the cause of death or like if there was a weapon involved or something, then we'll know more, but... Whoa. Yeah. And what if the person maybe who summoned it like didn't even know? No, I don't know. No, nobody summoned it. Like we're getting carried away over here. <laughs> we're sleuth. We're, yeah, we're stop sleuthing. All right. Leave it. All right. There's better sleuths than us out there anyway. Nike buys a virtual sneaker maker. Oh, crypto. Another crypto <laughs> story. I get the crypto. You world degenerate. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Nike Inc. is acquiring a virtual collectibles company as it dives further into the metaverse. Yeah, well, they saw what uh, Adidas was doing, right? Yes. And buying land. Like, they just like, listen, we're Nike. All right, you're doing it, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. The sportswear giant agreed to buy Riftkit, RTFKT, sure. a business founded in 2020 that creates digital products like sneakers and uses blockchain technology to ensure authenticity. According to a statement on Monday, financial terms of the deal were not disclosed. This acquisition is another step that accelerates Nike's digital transformation. Chief Exec Executive Officer John Donahoe said in the statement, our plan is to invest in the, in the what did I say? R rit. rit? Rift kit? That's what I said, but Rit. But the T becomes a T before the there. F. Yeah. Rit. I think kit. you just say the abbreviation. Rit. Kit. <laughs> Rit. Kit. Um. Rit. Kit. Serve and grow their innovative and creative community and extend Nike's digital footprint and capabilities. Plotting its digital future. Yeah, man. Downloadable virtual goods. Can you imagine, Will? All you got to do is collect the NFTs of the sneakers. You don't actually need to own the sneakers in the future. Mm-hmm. Because you, you got all these sneakers in the closet. Like, we get it. You're enthusiastic, but you don't even wear them. And <laughs> you it, don't even wear them, so... There's dust everywhere. Might as well be digital, right? If, if it seems to be anything that people collect that can be NFT'd, uh, sports, they did it with uh, NBA, Top Shot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, video games, we imagine a way in which skins and things, people feel very strongly about that, but... It's, yeah. It seems, artwork, obviously, not, was the number one. It, it seems inevitable now that people are going to be collecting digital versions of the th of all the things that had previously been collected in, in, the, in the real world, non-virtual, physically manifested. I wonder if there was a way that um, if you connect, if you collect like a Nike shoe, like physically, somehow it could be tied to like an NFT and yeah. be certified sure in that way so like if you know that sure. you know this person owns the nft they have the legit physical yeah it's like it's like shoot. a uh authenticity certificate yeah which they've but had. even more so since it's in the blockchain it's in it's in the you just had to say blockchain today <laughs> didn't you <laughs> yeah I have to say at least once yeah, exactly. a day in the studio. You're like, uh, you're like, Lou, I, I quit crypto, man. It's keeping me up at night. It's not good for me. Here's seven stories about crypto. Yeah. And I'm going to say blockchain multiple times in the day. And I check Mark Asana. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's done. It's complete. Um, yeah, man. It, it, who knows how they're going to end up using it, but definitely you can imagine that you go, you buy the sneaker, the collectible sneaker, you get the collectible NFT that's exclusive to the to those that were able to purchase the limited number of those sneakers that were available. And now mm -hmm. the value goes through the roof for both. It's uh, you, you can see so many ways that they can do this type of thing, man. It's uh, endless. Yeah. Collectibles, enthusiasm, enthusiasm mapping, human enthusiasm yes. equals value, period, equals money, period. My RTX 3090 is overheating with this GTA 5 ultra realistic graphics model. Okay, this popped up in my suggested videos. And uh, these are always incredible to me when people uh, just boost the performance on a title that you've seen before. And then all of a sudden it looks like something completely different, completely better. Before you play it, you're going to have to uh, go over to the quality settings over there, Will. Oh, right. Yeah. It's, what was it's, I thinking? What, 4K? I guess yeah, so. go all the way up. 4K, 60 frames, ultra realistic graphics gameplay, maximum settings, ray tracing graphics mod. 
Uh, he's, he starts out with a car here. You 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 may have to. Uh, I mean, look, it looks <laughs> amazing. It looks incredible. So good. Uh, so I mean, you have some driving. Obviously, you have some uh, violent gameplay as well. I mean, it's GTA after all. Um, so you were impressed by this? Well, aren't you? I mean, I am. Yeah. He, well, he he did say his thirty ninety is overheating. Thirty ninety sort of state of the art at the moment. Um, but yeah, the future. Just, uh, like you were showing off that Matrix thing the other day. Remember that? Yep. And you know, every so often you you have you have leaps in graphics performance. And yeah. It's definitely not for everybody because everybody doesn't have a thirty ninety, and then certainly the game doesn't look like this for the vast majority of people. But you catch glimpses when you see, it, like, oh man, and particularly when you're looking at the reflections and things like that. Mm -hmm. The missing pieces you don't. When you're playing the game, you're in the game, you're like, yeah, it looks good, it looks great, and you don't really pick up. But then you see something like this, and you're like, man, the real world has so many more like micro little nuances, reflections, shadows. There's still a long way to go, but you see something like this, and you're like, oof. You can picture hyper-realistic virtual yeah. worlds. Yes. Um, I think the lighting has everything to do with it. You know, mm -hmm. um, reflections. Yeah. Once they get uh, those RTX, like that ray tracing technology, um, like 100%, then I, I think that we'll be living in it, to it's, be honest. You know what's, like, it's, what's funny it's about so this? so impressive. The, the, that the, the, the part that feels the most unbelievable is just the way the person's driving. It's not actually the visual <laughs> appearance of anything. If this, if this, if if the driving was normal instead of like driving down the middle of the road, which <laughs> yeah. e which everybody does in GTA. In fact, sometimes I get so caught up in the driving down the middle of the road, I don't do anything else. Right. I just cruise around and completely yeah, it, get off track. You're just driving like a regular car, obeying the uh, exactly. Graphic, like then it would even look more realistic. Which I think was the key when you showed that Matrix clip. That was being demoed. It was basically a tech demo, and you showed it on on uh, PlayStation Five. Yeah, all the since it was a tech demo and you weren't really playing it, you couldn't see the person playing it. So the video gameness of it wasn't right. wasn't evident. Yeah, and so the same thing goes here. Is as you look around and you're like, man, yeah, virtual virtual worlds are uh, certainly getting there. And this was a game that was released one in 2013. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so much potential. I mean, yeah, yeah if you if you're even to even to play it back, yeah, in 4 4K 60, I presume prior to upload it would look even better actually on a on a person's GPU just like displayed so, on their yeah. monitor. It would be even I wonder how many frames they were getting. At it has to settings. be at least 60, right? It has to be at least 60 or else we'd be but it could have been a bit more. Oh yeah, for sure. 60 and up, I would say. My RTX 3090 is overheating <laughs> with this GTA 5 ultra realistic graphics. So go check the original video. 140,000 thumbs up. Channel's name's Inter. Damn. Shout out.